Hello everybody, it's SD Matt Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at two medium tanks that I absolutely love to make silver in. So, starting off, we have the TL1 LPC, and up next, we're going to have the Brichetto 46. So, this is going to be a little series. We're going to be doing medium tanks today. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing, uh, depending on how the matchmaking goes, heavies, lights, or even tank destroyers. So, going over each category of tanks for silver making. Um, so far, my mediums, I find that my LPC, this medium here on screen, is probably one of the top-notch money makers. You know, you're, you got a base pin of 208 and a premium pin of 280, and your standard shells only cost 420 each, which means the profits you make off of each and every single match is through the roof. Now, I got two replays for you guys today. And these replays really, really just through the roof. These all happened probably about an hour ago. Or maybe even 30 minutes ago. But they were great matches. And heartbreaking defeats and total conquering wins. So, the TL-1 LPC. The reason why I recommend this as a, a silver making tank. It's extremely versatile. It can play... A heavy scout you can play the medium role extremely well and if you're using the double shot with this it is just absolutely phenomenal being able to jump up put two shells in and then come back down for the 280 alpha so 280 280 you know you're looking at about 640 660 every single time you load now right off the bat here Oh, uh, we're, we're playing with Blade, by the way, in both these matches. Um, thought to myself, I kind of want to make a nest in the back. You know, just a spot to give us extra concealment. And here I am, just looking at Blade, like, dang it, you hit that tree. I wanted to make it go inward. But, hey, later on, what he did actually helps out a lot. So, um, the, the way I like to play whenever I'm making silver, I, I like to pull up tanks that are still competitive. They still hit the matchmaking hard. But at the same time, they can be competitive tanks. They can be front line. You, you you don't lose a lot. You know, choosing a premium tank to make money in is it, a personal decision. And I feel like showing you guys my choices for my medium class. But here we are, Milanovka. I'm honestly goofing around a little bit. I'm just like, I like hitting trees anymore. Knocking over as many as I can to make little nests. It will surprise you guys. Nest making in World of Tanks. So knocking down trees right now. Extremely worth it. Knocking these down just to give you a spot. So what I did. We have a position in the back and a position in the front now. Position in the front is so I can stop, take shots, pull back behind them, come up, spot, back up. And knowing that I have a little bit of a safety net. Concealment's probably the best that's ever been in this game right now with this update, too. Um, I do find that a lot of tanks are lacking in view range since they took away the uh, binocular telescopes. Those were extremely useful on, let's say, the Scorpion or the Shaska, the SU-130PM. But it is what it is. We're getting used to it. As time goes on, they're going to realize they might need to add those back just to give those tanks the extra view range. But... Silver makers. Yeah. So far. Nothing too exciting. The match is going slow. We have two hits on a medium, the Vengeance. So, taking it slow. You know, we're not really pushed out of our spawn. A uh, match like this, it's already 10 to 14, by the way. If you take a look at that board, we are in trouble. This is a match we should not win. It, it should be extremely hard 10 to 13 now we are we're starting to limit the we know we're we're getting those odds closer vengeance still off the back 271 hit points i'm thinking to myself i want to get back to our little nest that we made earlier just because at 9 to 11 the boards are getting closer but they still have a lot of superiority with the lights that they have our lights are trying their best but they're not pushing up they're not willing to scout out so you know Playing a medium that I've made to be versatile to handle every single situation that we can throw it into. It, it's just, take your time. 
You know, there's no point to rush. You made a nest. Use it. Now, loading the high explosives, trying to hit the light tank, swapping over to premium rounds. The premium rounds in this are 4,200 a pop. You know, if you're looking to make silver, uh, the premium rounds, they're not exactly going to be helping you <laughs> in that. Basically took the standards and threw an extra zero on them. But we're throwing them in just to make sure that we can get the damage out. Especially since left side, I'm, I, I'm what's preventing these mediums and heavies from taking out our artillery. You know, I'm right now spotting for the artillery, doing everything that I can. Ooh. Oh, and also, if you guys didn't know, LPC this week is on sale for 3,800 gold. I seriously recommend, if you guys don't have the Stone Cold Steve Austin, you don't have the LPC, get out there, get your hands on this tank. It is an absolutely phenomenal tank. The 280 heat pin through the roof on the heat pin beforehand i used to complain about it but now that i've been playing it i've been playing other tanks i realized this thing is just a stomper it is overall really solid tank and if you want to make silver the standard rounds inside this at the 420 that they cost you're going to be making silver now right here he got despotted so what i did was pull a little bit forward because i knew that the tree behind me was preventing me from spotting him because I was behind it. So pulling out in front of that limited the amount of bushes that were in the way, so we instantly spotted him out. Right here, loading high explosives up against the vanguard. I just want to make sure he's out for the count. One shell into him, 132, and then another shell for 147 into the dragon. Tracking and damaging the turret of the dragon because we landed the shell perfectly. So, so far, it's 5 minutes, 32 seconds in the match. We're up to 2,889 damage. 510 blocked. Along with that, we've done 1,030 damage. Well, spot assist. Not damage. I don't know how you get two different damage numbers. But, you know, spot assist, yeah, all the way. And blind shot number one, blind shot number two, and we take out the 43 TP. Tier 7 Heavy. And taking this from a 14 to 10 is now down to a 6 to 4. This match definitely was a good match. Held that position on the left side extremely well. They weren't expecting to come forward, try to handle a medium that was just super hard to spot out. Once their light tanks were gone, it was basically game over. So... The LPC overall, this is a tank I would love to get a review out on, but with the way that the game's being right now, it's it's extremely difficult to get out reviews unless we want to try and use uh, Tanks GG. But Tanks GG armor models, um, PC changes consistently compared to what we see on console, so a lot of things do change, but view range and other things, they, they like to stay the same. So the way that I have my LPC put together right now, we're looking at about 460 base view range on the run. Um, amplifying the reload as much as I can. Along with that, we're running vertical stabilizers and improved ventilation. Overall, just getting the tank to perform the best that it can. We're also running a premium consumable for the extra 10% passive towards all crew abilities. And then I believe it is a 15% when active for all crew abilities as well. Zooming in, thinking about taking a shot, but nope, artillery. There we go. This match, you know, it's for silver makers. Whenever you're picking out your silver makers, you don't need the, to load nothing but premium. Pick tanks that are versatile. You know, tanks that can go in, get the job done, handle it well. Or something that you're comfortable in to make silver. There's even some tier 8 tech tree tanks that can be used to make silver. For instance, T32. Sure, it doesn't have the bonuses that the premium tanks do, but as a free-to-play player, the, the haul down capability of that tank and just keeping it in your garage just to be able to make silver really helps out. So LPC, this was indeed a really good run. And we made 90,000 off that match. We we were lobbing out some premiums, you know, but it, it, it's things got to go the way it's got to go. And up next, we do have a match in the Progetto. So... 
I don't know about you guys, but the Progetto 46, this is one of those premium tanks that it's an underdog here on console. On PC, this is an absolute beast here on console. You don't see him a whole lot. But for me, I, I really do enjoy my Progetto. I enjoy the matches that I have inside of it. You know, it's the capabilities that it has with the three shots self-loading. You know, the more shots you have loaded, the faster it's going to shoot. It, it's a solid tank overall. So this match is on El Haluf of all maps. The map rotation right now does suck a little bit. But we're getting used to it. So far, we're, we're technically middle tier, but bottom tier because of plus one, minus one. Against a couple of nines. Two 705s, a WZ-1-4, a Bat Chat, and Oho. Well, Oho's a tier eight. But still, big fat gun. Do not want to get in front of that. The Progetto 46... It's a little bit pricier inside the uh, premium store, but it, it's a tank that, you know, since I got it, I've only put in so many matches into it. But each time I'm looking to make silver, for some reason, this is just a tank I enjoy pulling out to make silver in. You know, just the capabilities it has, the speed, the influence in the match that you're capable of doing, it's just really nice. And plus, Blade, this is honestly one of his favorite tier 8s. So, I mean... <laughs> Now, technically, it's not my favorite, it's Blade's favorite, but I enjoy it just as much as he does. Now, same setup on the Progetto. We're running with coated optics, but rather than vertical stabilizers, we're running with a gun rammer, just to get the extra reload. We're also running improved ventilation, and then the fourth equipment slot, which I don't think any of us agree with because it's a base game mechanic, that has been converted into a piece of equipment. What I love to do is, is that, you know, I'm I'm not going to be in the fight for a whole long time. You know, get the three shots off as quick as I can. The premium consumable for the extra 15%, just waiting for that reload to kick in. Just let it go. Now, I'm going to be pointing out a mistake that I do make here in a second. First shell, we got it into him without a problem. The second mistake is... I pulled forward again to get a shot off. Right here, my barrel is probably poking through the ground. Or poking out a little bit too far. If I would have backed up a little bit more, that would have been a way different story. Coming down the hill. Ooh, look at that. Taking the 300 damage. Now, <laughs> I don't know what it is about me and hitting trees anymore. But for some reason, I love knocking over trees. I love making positions to go to. Positions to fall back to. Just the concealment that they're applying right now. If you're not using them, you're not you're not playing right. You can make a 4,005 basically invisible on some maps right now. So I highly recommend, you know, just go over, knock over a few trees. Get a medium tank, get a light tank. Light tanks probably don't need it as much, but it's still, it's just the icing on top for light tanks for concealment. For medium tanks though, the the difference it makes is tremendous. I haven't tried it too much inside my heavies, but I'll tell you now, the more trees you have in front of you, the better. You could probably lob like, I mean, <laughs> 4,005 ghosting it. Oh yeah, you can definitely make a 60 TP and E100, probably even a mouse disappear if you really wanted to. So far, we're taking the center, me and Blade. We're, we're just taking our time. We're, we're basically strategizing that by this point, wondering what we want to do. Now, I see a dragon right here in the center, thinking to myself, I didn't even see him beforehand. I didn't know where he came from. Uh, honestly, watching over the replay again, I don't even know where he came from. Here I am just spacing it, <laughs> spacing it even as I'm watching the replay. So, right off the bat, taking a snapshot, what was that, 244 into the bat chat up top. Nice and simple. Telling Blade I'm going to be pushing up on the left side. I'm going to be swapping in the premium rounds because if we run into that T28, we're going to want to be able to take him out as fast as we can. So there we go. Pop in the premium consumable. Get the extra reload for the 15%. Making sure that we get some cover down here in case we have to fall back. We don't want to get spotted out by the people up on top of the ridge. And yeah, I'm going to hit a tree. There we go. It's down. Nice, good spot. Right there, I'm pretty sure you can take any tank destroyer, as long as they're not super tall and have really good concealment right there on El Haluf. 
Now we're gonna be taking the back side. Now, I was talking to Blade and I said, I, I think that the TD is up along this line here. But, you know, as, as, as it continued on, we realized he's nowhere on this line. He's actually above us on top of the hill to the left. Knocking down these trees just to get the extra concealment on this side if we have to fall back down and across the map, we're gonna be getting spotted out. I would rather not get spotted out across the map if we had the fall back right here. So T28's up top. We're talking about pushing up, taking the top left to head up. See the Progetto, just putting in as many rounds as we can to take out that bat chat. And here comes artillery number one. I'm on a full reload. I don't know what Blade's doing. I don't know if he's fully reloading or not, but Blade manages to get a shot in. I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit of my DPM and rams blade and blade gets to kill on the artillery both artillery's already out because they rushed us man that that's a way to take out Artie. now pushing up no nice subtle we're, we're both giggling just a crap load because those artillery came out of nowhere waiting on the reload i don't want to sacrifice my dpm the way that the projectiles work with the the loading mechanic you really want to try and not sacrifice your reload so putting in single shots to begin with is the way to do it you do not want to sacrifice it at all so right here we're going to be getting a couple of single shots in not sacrificing anything looking at the health pool on the right side 675 knowing that we're going to need to put one more into him now we don't want to mercy roll him and then have a 10 second reload so we're just going to guarantee the third shell's in. Okay, 201. A mill is out of the fight. Oh, stay away from the gun. Do not want to get hit by that T28. Come around behind him. We're going to wait for two shells to load in. We do not want to track him in place right now. We don't want to sacrifice the DPM. So far, it's a 4 to 6. I really need to get this guy out. Tracking shot, waiting for the reload. Just kick back for a minute. He's probably sitting there thinking to himself, he's dead and he knows it. Now that he's on the move, I'm just going to put all three shells into him. Not even going to hesitate. So far, we're down to our last three standards, and it's a three to five. Now, in a three to five situation, you know, normally you're like, oh crap, this sucks. So, first things first, I'm thinking to myself, can I take anybody out of this match from where I'm at? So, the UDES appears... You know, aiming in, see if we can get a shot. Don't want to waste it because we only had three standards left. After that, we have a couple of high explosives. Nothing too much, only three rounds of those. Then for the premiums, we match our premiums to our standards. Just because if we end up in, against tier 10s, I like to have, you know, the same amount. That way it's easier to swap back and forth. If I put a full clip of standards into somebody, I get them all through. Then I want to guarantee the penetration for the next three. I swap over to premium and... You know, just swap ammunition according to what I need to do. Now, right here, watching the map, this is the best way to do it. I see I have a heavy tank on the left side. Trying to take a look at what he is. It's a 705 down to 113 hit points. So, no point to load in the premium. He's in a really bad position, and I know if I go further out left, I'm not spotted anymore. Coming around, taking the time, letting the bloom come in, and just blasted him. Now... Something I'm going to throw out there. That was the fifth kill for a Kala Bonhoff's medal. We need four more. Can we get them? Let's find out. So, Progetto, overall, this tank handles extremely well. You can put this thing into a lot of situations, and as long as you're going nuts, handling it, beautiful snapshot, that was just fantastic mediums out of the game that means that their mobility is now gone it is nothing but me and three heavies left and ooh, look at that t32 is out of the match as well so the rocks on the right side i did not spot out 705 or the vk i don't know how many hit points these guys have left so i don't want to play too aggressive i know that they're on that side of the map but at the same time, I haven't been keeping track of their positions on the map, so I don't know if they're going to be coming from the left side or if they're going to be coming from the right side, watching a shell hit the ground right there. So right here, I'm thinking I kind of want to just move somewhere a little bit better. I know I have enough hit points 
to take on one of them. I can take one shell from either the 705 or the VK. And then I'm down to a one hit for both of them. So I, I know I can play a little bit risky. And right here, spotted out both of them. Don't want to slow down too much. Taking a snapshot with that round, I should have held off. But it, it hit him. It made him fall back. Which probably helped me in the end. So we're not really bolstering the accuracy on the Progetto or the LPC. I've probably only had the accuracy perk in both those tanks and that's about it. So not really overkilling the accuracy. This is more really close to like the base accuracy that you can get on these tanks. Just because trying to make them versatile, I don't want to focus on a single category and sacrifice in another. But I do know that VK, I want to take him out. Now, right here, I know the 705A is pushing up the left side to come and try and get up behind me. And, oh, we're sideways. We're still sideways. Yep. At least we're not spotted. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now we're pushing down the hill. Now we're coming down. So, right here, the bush is right there. That's going to break view of sight just for a moment. But it's, you know, that position would have been nice. I had probably a few minutes ago in the match right here. You know, the VK, he's low health. He's still a gun in the game, but he is a guaranteed one hit if I can pin him. So rather than trying to focus out the 705A, the VK is right now the target that I want to take down. So pushing up the hill, there we go. Spotted him out. I'm sitting here like, I got enough hit points to take one hit. I'm willing to take one hit. And <laughs> lucky me, he shoots the gun mantle, it gets absorbed. And we're still in the fight. We are still going strong. Still nice and healthy. 782 hit points. Popping in that premium consumable just to make sure we have everything loaded. Bolstering the view range as much as we can. Going around the side. Because now the 705A, he's on his way back. He is definitely on his way back. I don't want to pop out. I don't want to make a mistake. You know, so the goal is get to a position that I know I'm going to have the upper hand advantage on him. He is a tier 9. I am a tier 8. He also has 1,200 hit points left, which means I'm going to have to probably put 6 rounds into him just to be able to kill him. Not including if I shoot the side armor, it gets absorbed. It, it's going to be a pain. What I do have on him, though, is mobility. Mobility and view range guaranteed. So, coming around the backside, going to head over to the T, the uh, tank destroyer sniper area that all the TDs love to go to for whatever reason. Pop up over the top, try to scout him out. I don't see him pulling out just a little bit more, trying to spot down low just in case he's below the rock line. Then, coming around the left side to try and spot out the entire middle. Now, I know I got the view range. I know that the 705A doesn't have the greatest concealment at all. So far, I didn't see him. Now I'm a little bit worried. And then right there, we spotted him out. There he is. One shell absorbed by the space armor. Shell number two, put it right into the top. There we go. Now we're just going to pull back, pop the premium consumable, wait for those two more shells to load back in. I can tell you now, by this point, my hands are shaking. My heart is pumping. I am struggling to stay focused. And there he is. He's moving out. Originally, I thought I was going to be able to poke out right there and get some shots into a side or lower plate. He is a rear-mounted turret. And right here, mistake number one, I stayed out. I took a hit. But in return, we put one. We put two, that ricocheted. We put three rounds into him. He is down to 581 hit points. This is a really, really close game. Kalabanov's medal. Let's go. So far, up to 4,736, 463 spot assist. Right here, I'm thinking, can I drop down this? Can I get below this? Can I possibly get out of here without exposing myself too much? Right here, I'm thinking, I want to go left. 
but I know that's going to be out in the open to him. It's going to be a mistake. Right here, pulling out. He misses a shot. We put one, two, and he's behind the wall. Now, at this moment, I'm thinking to myself, I've got to, I got to go. He's on a reload. I should have fired. I should have fired. Absolute heartbreaking defeat. 161 hit points away from a Kalabanov's medal. And even though I'm on the losing team, I've got enough experience to end up second place with 5,156 damage done, 8 kills, 32 direct hits. We blocked 520 from the VK. Honestly, heartbreaking defeat. High caliber, Radley Walters. And I had to step away for a minute. That's how good that match was. So, all right. The TL1 LPC for Jet 46. These two mediums are absolutely outstanding whenever it comes down to making silver inside this game. I did not want to inc include the Ragnarok, the Hydra, or the Minotaur, even though those tanks have a 75% silver earn rate. They come around once a year. They are the Crimson Set. So these are tanks that you can get all year round. I don't know about the LPC, but it's on sale this week. If you guys can get it, get your hands on it. It is a solid tank. I love it to death. But other than that, you guys, thanks for watching. Seriously hope you got to the end here. That heartbreaking defeat inside the Progetto was just tremendous for me. So leave a like, comment, subscribe. Um, if there's conversation potential, I would love to jump on, have conversations with you guys over on YouTube. And if you want to, catch me over on Twitch. There should be a link um, on my YouTube, wherever it is. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere on there. Or just, you know, search up Mad, SOD Mad Haven on, on Twitch. Um... Also, check out Noodleton. I might be giving away an LPC on Noodleton stream later today, tomorrow, or whenever he's on. So, catch you guys then. Have a great day.